Hello everyone, welcome back to round 6 of our Pokemon Regional Championships here at DreamHack Summer and we will be seeing our first win in as we are only playing 7 rounds. Yeah. The winner of our match will basically be in top 8 already. Yeah, the winner of this match can ID into top 8. Both players are 4 1 0? 4 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. yeah so 4 1 0. Yeah, so exactly. with 5 1 1, you should be guaranteed into top 8. So yeah. uh, who do we have here, Philip? Yes, we have a player. Who you might have seen him before. I definitely saw him. I talked to him and I've cheered for him. Um, Stefan Ivanov from France. Yeah, One obviously. Of a yeah. Very accomplished player. Uh, most people probably know him because he won uh, NAIC last year. So, uh, yeah, going into NAIC next week, this is actually one of the players to look out for and it might be interesting for you guys to uh, see him. Yes, also like, if I uh, have to ask you, Lydia, what is Stefan Ivanov known for? Which deck is he playing? What would you guess? Oh. Maybe let's take Maybe. a look at his accomplishments. Hmm. Mm, I think I it's something with Zorak. Oh yes, exactly. And he's bringing his trusty Zorak again. And we will be seeing him facing off against... Uh, Pere Abros Paretes. I can't roll the R, but <laughs> I try From Spain. <laughs> and yeah, he's bringing a Zorak deck as well, apparently. So we will be seeing a Zorak mirror. However, the decks are not quite the same because Stefan's build is quite more unconventional. Who, fo who follows him on Twitter might have seen it already. And um, he focuses on the Dugong instead of the typical Persian and Slowking. Yeah, also worth mentioning, uh, Pere is not, uh, well, he's not an accomplished player yet. This could be his <laughs> first big accomplishment here at DreamHack if he makes it into top eight. So that's why we didn't show his profile. There's nothing on there yet. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. We have this great new feature where we can show you all the limitless results and limitless, of course, has all the results. However, as Lydia said, he doesn't have one yet. But he's going first, so he's in a good position to win this mirror match. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we can also have a look at their price cards already. They have actually started, so let's go into the game, Philip. Uh, yeah, so Pere um, doesn't have anything special in his price card. Stefan has one tech card, which might hurt him with Velavita. As everyone knows, if your opponent already has 30 damage, Lavita does, um, I think, a total of 80, yes. So 10 plus 70, if your opponent has already 30, and he plays with Dugong, Kay. which snipes 60 to two of your opponent's Pokemon. So what he will be looking for is like sniping 60 damage on two of your opponent's Zoroks, and then he can clean it up with uh, Eva Zorak or Lavita. So this might come in handy. On the other side, Pere plays with Persian, which we've seen before in all those other decks. Also, Stefan is playing a Persian line as well, but a bit thinner. He's focusing really on this Dugong. Seems to really like the sniper pick. Yeah. So uh, we see Pere starting. He has oh. three Sorua, one Ditto Prism Star, and a Mew. Yes. Mew. Oh, what a start from Pere. Having this Elm is, of course, always yeah. optimal. And he didn't even have to use Otapu Lele and had an additional Pokemon and started with Azurua already, so this is a magnifi magnifi magnificent <laughs> start for Pera. <laughs> oh, I, I'll try to stick it's to simpler words in the future. <laughs> 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 yeah, on the other hand, we see uh, Stefan and he has to take uh, the harder way to get his Elm. He needs to play an Ultra Ball, getting the exactly. Tapulele, then getting the Elm. This is yeah, yeah, also most of the time what you need to do. Exactly. Also, it looks like he's not going for Elm, but Lily instead. So we not only see a clash of different Zorak approaches, we also see a different approach of uh, to the engine, not just the attackers, because Stefan seems to be favoring this Lily approach with lots of ball cards, and Para on the other hand is playing the good old Elm, which basically... What do you say is the advantage of going uh, for this Lily approach? Um, well, it's hard to say. Like. It has different advantages. It's basically hoping to get a better turn two, and okay. it's it's a bit stronger against this let loose more shadow because oftentimes your opponent will try to disrupt you with a let loose turn one or turn two, and with Elm of course you um, you use Elm for example, and you have three cards left, or you use Tapulele for Elm and or Ultra Ball for Tapulele for Elm, and you have hardly anything left, yeah. and it's something for turn two as well. With Lily, you just um, get a lot of cards and are set for turn two as well. However, it's a bit more random, of course, because you draw random cards on search of Pokemon specifically. Okay, I understand. So uh, we're seeing exactly what you've just said. We also see a Pokemon communication for Mew. Um, 
Is it interesting that he's going for Mew that early? Um, he might be fearing a dugong from Perra because he himself is playing the dugong and um, of course it can be a very strong card in the mirror match because if you go first and you use it on turn two you can snipe two of your opponents or rears and that is probably what Stefan is afraid of. Um, thinking that if Perra has a dugong himself and he gets a turn two he has the ditto on board already so he could evolve into a dugong and snipe two of his rear that would be very painful and would be a huge advantage for him. So he's going for the Mew just to make sure that um, yeah, Perry can't do that. All right. And yeah, now he's also getting his Zoruas ready. And his Ditcher. Ditcher Ditcher Prism Star, of course. Really good card because it can be, it can get anything you want it to be. Exactly. Um, and yeah, um, the same amount of basic Pokemon on the bench, however, Stefan had to go through way more um, resources to, to get there. And uh, he also has Tapu Lele and Mew on the bench, which don't do much. But sitting back with Peril, um, doesn't seem to be playing the Dugong. Uh, he focuses on Persian and Slowking. So, yeah, the Mew and the Tapu Lele are more or less useless on the bench for Stefan. And Peril also only has the strong Pokemon. And also, he's going first. And yeah, here we see the first Zoroark already hit oh. the board. So that means the first trade of this match isn't that far away either. Yes, so we are back at the Pokemon trading card game, <laughs> guys. We will be seeing lots of trading on both sides, and I hope. And there's the first trade. And it begins. <laughs> Trading away a Lolan Mark. He already has a uh, double colorless energy, so that's probably what he wants to use, with yep. which is really nice. Taking out one of these Zoroars, leaving Stefan with only one Zoroar and this two. However, this opens up the possibility for Stefan to go to get a Dugong and snap like Ditto and the Meowth, for example, or like two of his Aurora, if he manages Zorua to get it. As a rock, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it seems to be the w thing he wants to go for, promoting this Ditto instead of um, just with Aurora and going with the Zorak attack. And it Os looks like he has to trade away the uh, Alolan Muck as well. Yeah, the trade here, hard decision, because his hand wasn't too great and usually no. you want to um, trade after supporter, but he was thinking, ah, maybe I get a Dugong or a Ball or something. Or a better so supporter than yeah, a judge. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the second thought that makes the difference, because like just being greedy and trying to get the new Dugong wouldn't make too much sense, but um, trying to get a better supporter is uh, quite a reasonable decision. And yeah, he got a Tatalizer, so it's, yep. Yep. it's more or less better. Because like after trade, after judge and trade, you would have five cards, and like this way he draws five cards, so it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, however, no energy for Stefan, uh, but it's not too bad. He has a nest ball, he has a communication, so he can get another Zorak out and put another Zorua to the bench, or like a, s a how is it called? C seal, I think. Yeah, and a seal for to bench, for example, if he opts to go that way, of course. That's what we are. Oh, he goes for Mew. Yeah, Mew. Meow. Trying to get his Persian out as soon as possible. Reasonable decision, of course, Persian being one of the amazing cards that came with a new set. Yeah. He's taking some time here, checking which resources he he went through already. He had to waste quite a couple of them, but mostly has everything he needs. Uh, he went for Guzma, but he still has Pulpit, of course, so all fine there. And yeah, thinking about which basic will be most important next turn. So what would you take? Um, it's hard to tell. I'd usually focus on Zorua, yes. Just getting more Zorox is the gateway to your game. Gets you everything you need. And yeah. And Para won't take out a knockout on a GX next turn, probably. So Persian wouldn't do much. Um, getting the Dugong would be quite hard because Stefan doesn't have an energy yet. So he yeah. wouldn't have a way to retreat. Oh, and instead of going for Zorak, he goes for Dedenne. So yeah, this is of course one of the another one of the great cards from this new set. Being able to discard your hand and draw six more. I mean, if he doesn't do anything with the Ditto, it gets KO'd as well. And then Perra is already two prizes in the lead, which yeah. is not too much. But I think the major part is he doesn't really want to give up the Ditto Prism Star. Yeah. Also, um, I, mean I mean, he got six new cards, so of course not unlikely yeah. that he'd get something good out of it. And he got a Zorak. Um, his bench, however, was a bit painful. Having two Dedenne, Tapulele and Mew already. So three useless Pokemon, basically. 
Yeah. But he got another Zorak, he got the double color as energy. And I think Stovan is playing Giovanni's. Actually, he's not. Okay, no, never no mind Giovanni then. For him. <laughs> and only one Ace of Roller. Let's see. Um, this is the thing that has become more and more popular lately, playing only one Ace of Roller. But um, two Ace of, Ace of Rollers, of course, a key card in those mirror matches, and especially in this situation for Stefan, because. Um, he has lots of. Uh, he only has Zorax on board, so he won't be taking any one shots mm -hmm. or won't be a doing any dugong plays anytime soon. So he needs those Ace Rollers. And yeah, he will see two trades for Para. Ah, okay. Everything fine. A little confusion with w if he had drawn already. And yeah, yeah Para on the other Stefan side. Stefan is also tracking the trades for us mm -hmm. with a little die. Very nice of him. Uh, yeah. Um, Ferret on the other side compared to uh, plays two Ace Rollers, so Stefan only has one. So there's more healing in Paris deck. And also an important thing is that Para has this Ditto on the board and with Meow. So he has access to a low uh, to yeah, Persian GX, mm -hmm. uh, which can take very crucial one shots in the mirror match. So um, this might come in very huge later on. Yeah, we, we will see how this turns out. So far, Stefan has hit. So, if Perry is not able to get it out of the active spot, Stefan is very likely to be able to KO it. Yeah, of course. This would enable Perry to use um, his catwalk ability next turn, so it's always like there's, there's, back, there's drawbacks to everything, but of course he wants to take a knockout um, if possible. Well, he needs the Persian first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, he uses Nultra Ball for Tapulele for Guzma here, opting not to go the heal path instead, probably targeting down the Ruhr just to, um, de just to hinder Stefan from developing his board further. Definitely always a reasonable path to take. And but of course this leaves um, Stefan's board is not too bad in this situation because he has two Zorak already, he has a double colorless energy which sta stays on board. And with the Guzma, he can take a knock, might be able to take a knockout on the damaged Zorak from Para and leaving Para's spot relatively weak. Stefan drawing a card. There's Pokemon. Oh, that was trade. Trading away the communication. Yes. And let's see what he's getting. He's trading communication, which is, um, yeah, I think it's a reasonable choice because I, yeah, he doesn't have Tapulila left, he doesn't have the Daniel left. And. He has lots of Pokemon anyways. Doesn't look like he got a Guzma, so he's just thinking about which cards do I need, which cards do I want to play, and which Pokemon do I want to get into play. It also doesn't look like he has a choice plan. Choice plan would be another one of the nice cards because it would. And um, 150 is uh, much better than 120 because when he can clean it up with um, Dugong, uh -huh. because it does yep. 60, right? So he could take like free prizes on Zorak and Ditto or something like that. So the Dugong is actually only in there for the Reshizard matchup, uh, is it? No, no, the Dugong is a very versatile Pokemon because if you want to take against Reshizard, you would uh, usually play the Slowking, which uh -huh. can one-shot Reshizard. Oh yeah, true. Dugong can't do that. However, it's much more versatile because Slowking is like a straight hard counter to Reshizard. Which isn't even that effective because yeah, most Rishis arts focus very much on Snorlax, like we've yeah, seen. Yeah, we've seen that before. And we've in the uh, Eevee Snorlax, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> not to overestimate the part that Eevee does here. And yeah, but Stefan getting his um, do getting his um, seal on the bench. Um, so Perez still hasn't evolved on the small basics, so the Dugong might come in very handy, taking knockouts on something like the Meowth. Oh and yeah. Um, or actually, it might probably. I uh, know, no. It's probably the 60 HP Meowth because um, Para plays the um, Elm. So this is huge because in Lily Engines you would usually play the 70 HP Meowth, which cannot be sniped by Dugong. Oh yeah, true. But as this is probably the 60 HP one, Dugong can take a knockout on it. It needs to be because he uh, put it out with Mew. With uh, um, yeah. And so we need to see what's going to happen. We see another trade. And yeah, so Para, of course, two prizes up. However, Zora games are not always only about prizes, it's very much about um, board development. And he has already two damaged Zora on board, while Stefan has none. And Stefan has the snipe option, and um, Para has uh, multiple small um, basics. 
However, he now got a communication. So he will be able to get probably get a third Zorak into play or a Persian if he opts to. He might actually be in one shot range already, I do not quite know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Persian GX does 10 damage only, but it does plus 20 for each Pokemon in your discard pile. So he would need 9 Pokemon in his discard pile to um, reach the 190 and then he would need Kukui or Choice Band for a while. Might get a chance to check his discard pile soon because <laughs> he might be checking his discard pile soon by himself. Yes. But now and the Persian is there and uh, whenever Stefan is in the position to be able to pay away Pokemon, oh. he needs to take that into consideration. Interestingly, oh. he Ace a roll as a benched Zorak. So he probably wants the Zorak to get knocked out so he can get X2 Persian's ability, otherwise he could have like... Interesting, he trades away a double colorless energy. But, well, thanks to the triple acceleration energy, double co energies aren't, aren't that val valuable anymore in Zorak decks anymore. Usually, yeah, usually having those four DCEs and no more energies to attack was very crucial to manage them properly and you were very well advised not to trade them away or put them on or keep like um, healing your damage Zorak so you keep those DCEs. But yeah, Perry deciding to attack with um, his Zorak um, that has damage already. So basically giving Stefan the option to even up the price trade, but of course activating the catwalk of um, Perry. Yeah, everything has advantages and disadvantages. And Zorak mirror matches <laughs> always feel a bit like a game of chess. Yes, and now this opens the way for pretty nice play from Stefan if he gets access to Dugong, Triple Acceleration Energy and Choice Band because then he could take a knockout on the active Zorak and the Ditto, taking three prizes and leaving Paris board quite weak. We finally see the Dugong coming into play and I actually can't wait to <laughs> see it. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen it today. Yeah, it's really, it's a very cool card. It seems a bit underwhelming on paper because it does like 60 to 2 of your points Pokemon and it needs free energy for it, but with this triple acceleration energy, it, um, it can be powered up very easily and like the strength of Zorak is really to hit your opponent where it, hurt, where it hurts most. And, oh yeah, he's deciding to uh, target down this Ditto and attack the Persian, which is of course a smart choice as well. This way, yeah. Para won't have access to Catwalk. Also, taking out the Dugong doesn't do too much for him if he opts to do so, because um, it's just one price and Stefan usually attacks with GX Pokemon. Yep. And uh, yeah, as I said, this way he didn't take a knockout on a GX Pokemon and he might have the option to next turn Guzma the Persian and get rid of it, which is really one of, like the person, I, ca I can't stress it enough, it's one of those crucial cards in the Zorak Mirror because it's a very grindy matchup with lots of healing and Persian is one of those cards that can take one shots. Yeah, and I mean, its ability is great. Yeah, of course. It's it's almost better than uh, it's almost better than trade. Cover trade is more consistent uh, because it doesn't have a condition, so trade's still like the best ability out there. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> so you're not betraying your <laughs> second <laughs> love, Zorak. Never. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, it will soon ro rotate. So one last ride, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, here we see parrot trading. So. He's still up and he uses a second trade. He's trading away his slow king, so uh, we probably yeah. won't see it in the yeah, matchup. The, the slow king it's also not that useful in that matchup. Yeah, it only does 60 damage plus 20 for each energy on the defending Pokemon. So like in this matchup it will do a maximum of 100 ever, so it's pretty underwhelming. And also, like having those Pokemon in the discard pile is of course important for Persians' attack to get more powerful. So, in general, in the mirror match, what's the road you want to take? Well, most important thing is to set up a strong board. So we see both players making decisions, where um, trying to disrupt your opponent's board state, like targeting the ruler so your opponent can't take more, uh, can't develop it further, or targeting something like Ditto and stuff. Don't really care too much about taking big knockouts or being like greedy, really trying to target on something like Tapulelo or Dedenne, because they know that those cards are those easy prizes are not what decides the game. It's just like having access to all the important cards at the right time. And so yeah, um, 
Usually for parrots, probably just getting a good board and getting like one or two Persians and trying to take like four prizes with Persian GX. For Stefan, however, it's w it's even more focused on trying to disrupt your opponent's board, and he wants to be very aware of those Persians and always trying to take uh, make parrot draw seven prizes as well. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, he's on a good way doing this. Uh, <laughs> Para now down to three prizes. Yeah, down goes the dugong. Um. Yeah, Stefan now. Isn't it quite an easy choice to put the Zorak in the active position? It depends. If he wants to use a Guzma, it might not be. Oh, yeah, true. Also, he can. Fi he might be thinking about using another gu dugong. Because now, if he could evolve um, oh. the Ditto into dugong and get um, a triple acceleration energy, of course, it would be great to take a knockout on. Azora and a Meowth. Yeah, of course. And I think that we might see him try to do that. Yeah, it would be really nice because, um, of course, the, the thing that sucks about it is that he then is left with only one Zora can play and he um, is giving up another non GX pri uh, prize, so that uh, Para goes down to two prizes again. However, um, it's still the nice Para the Catwalk. And also, uh, Harris down a lot of Pokemon. He's been trying to discard them to get his Persian going. So um, he might not have. Ac he might actually not be left with too little ba basic so Pokemon. So Catwalk is only triggered if the active Pokemon. No, gets if uh, GX Pokemon is not. Oh, gone. okay. Or uh, or X, I think, but like X aren't in form, so that's only relevant for Xpan. Okay. I was not sure about the card <laughs> <laughs> of the exact wording of the card. Yeah, it would be interesting to know how many triple acceleration energies <coughs> and how many um, Pokemon Para has in his discard pile. I think Nic Para has two triple acceleration energies in his discard pile, but Pokemon I have no clue. Yeah, I think um, both were quite a few already. And we yeah. see Para only pl plays three triple acceleration energy, so that might be huge because depending on that, um, Stefan might. Um, think about it either if he wants to target down Meowth or um, Persian, if he gets access to Guzma, that is. He has shuffled two Guzma back with um, Ball Pet, yeah. hoping to draw yeah. it. I actually don't think he did, so he will probably have to target the active. And we see an S Ball being played for Meowth. And Stefan now trying to get his own Persian into play, uh, which is obviously a good thing to have. Uh, yeah, and not drawing Guzma, of course, hurting a lot, and oh, yeah, Stefan has Ultra Ball and Triple Acceleration Energy, so it looks like he will be opting to go for Dugong again with his Ditto, and yes. There it is. <laughs> so this is quite strong. It, it as, I, as I said, it weakens Paris board considerably, and it um, denies Catwalk, so Paris only has one Zorak in play, so only one trade available. Yeah, and that also puts Stefan to even prices, so yeah. that's also another nice yeah. side effect. Yeah, the thing is, Stefan now thinks about if he wants to target Zorak or if he wants to take out the Zorua. Both options are reasonable, I think. Taking out, uh, attacking Zorak, he oh goes to even prices. Yeah, yeah. The Meowth makes defi definitely makes sense because he's afraid of those one shots, and yeah, he could have gone for Zorua, hoping that Para wouldn't have enough Pokemon left to take a knockout on the Dugong. However, Stefan's targeting the Zorak, knowing that he then only needs to take four prizes, and those, those will probably be the Zorak and uh, the Persian. It could also be that Stefan doesn't want to give Perry another Pokemon into oh his yeah, that pile. That's true as well. Don't know the exact number, but yeah. Stefan for sure does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And yeah, we're seeing Perry having a huge amount of cards in his hand, so having lots of options. He also got a second Zorak, having an Ultra Ball here, so he can go for a third one if he wants to. And yes, he does. So yeah, this is of course an extremely powerful board. Now the only thing he's missing, uh, and now he... Yeah, this is this is very strong. Um, he would like a Rescue Stretcher for Meowth, of course, to get um, access to more Persian. And actually, let me check. Oh yeah, he's playing a 2-2 line of Persian, so... And yeah, that there, there he goes. Rescue Stretcher for the Meowth. So this is of course great for him. Going down to two prizes after knocking out the um, 
Dugong now. And a Lily. Yes, and then being ready to go to take a knockout, uh, to take a one shot knockout with Persian Jigs next turn to close out the game. So, very commanding position. And yeah, especially this board is just so amazing. Like at this point, he has three Zorak and he has Persian and he has Mirth. So, he can hardly whiff anything. If Stefan takes a knockout on a GX, which is what he definitely wants to do, because I mean, yeah. he actually eventually has to take prizes. Then uh, he will have catwalk, he will have multiple trades, and yeah, this is looking relatively grim for Stefan. So what can Stefan Del do? Still um, do. Nice thing for him would of course be take out a Persian and hope that um, Pharaoh doesn't get another one. Because if he does, then he can use catwalk, sort of triple acceleration energy and choice band or Kukui and probably just finish the game. I don't believe he still needs more Pokemon in his discard pile. It's pretty late in the game already, and he has free trade. He also has a Dedan in his hand, yeah, I believe. Yeah, Persian's damage output is also capped, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's capped yeah. at 190. Yeah. So he still needs a damage modifier, but yeah. Catwalk is really the, the ability that um, guarantees it. And oh, here we see the Lavita of Stefan, which might which is quite nice to what have for him. What does it do again? It does 10 damage. <laughs> Very impressive for DCE. And if a defending Pokemon already has 3 damage counters, it does 70 more. Okay. So if he wants to target... Oh, he has a Guzma, so he will probably target the Persian exactly. Oh, and it uh, hits for weakness, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. So it will be a knockout. And the nice thing for him is that now he has a non jigs in the active ag once again. So Para will need a Guzma, a oh, Persian... Oh, here we can see the Lavita. Yes. So uh, Peru will need a Guzma, a Persian, and a triple acceleration energy, but it looks like he has all of those already in his hand. Unless his second uh, his second Persian is not in prizes, and I don't believe it's in the discard pile, so he can just use his Ultra Ball this here. This Lavita does also hit Zoroark for weakness. Exactly. It's really good. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Pikachu's Akram. <laughs> oh. And Eevee Snorlax. Why do not all Zoroark de decks play it? Um, because it's hard to get those three damage counters there. It only makes a lot of sense if you have this Dugong focus. Okay, yeah. Makes and sense. yeah, here we see Para going for the Persian, and he already has triple acceleration energy and Guzma in his hand, and a choice band as well. So he has everything he needs. Still shuffling up properly, though. <laughs> Might as well just. And yeah, there he goes. He has it. There's he needs and yeah, just takes yeah. a knockout on the top of Lele. And we see Stefan packing his things really, really quick. <laughs> yeah. He knows that this game probably took a while and he doesn't want to get into timeout. I hope Perez is remembering to pick up his price cards. Oh, yes, he is. Very good. Yeah, time's actually not the worst thing for these players because a tie they still need a tie and a win to make top eight. So a tie doesn't hurt them too much. Yeah. But of course, Stefan is one of those players. He he absolutely hates ties. He always tries to go for the win as much as possible. I, even in situations where he can ID into day two, like he can ID to secure top 32, he usually plays to make sure that he gets top 16 maybe or that he gets a better score for day two. So he's definitely yeah. looking for a win here. But in top eight, it, it's actually quite interesting because it might make sense to not win because sometimes you have a very high record and you have lots of points and you are already guaranteed, you play against a good matchup for you, so yeah, you yeah. might decide to actually give the bad matchup a win, so you Certainly. have uh, the good matchup a yeah, win, yeah. so you have a good <laughs> matchup for yourself even makes in top 8. Sometimes it even makes sense to give a bad matchup a win, because yeah. it will make cut anyways, and so like you're not in the same bracket in top oh 8. Yeah, true. But uh, yeah, it rarely comes up, and these players won't have this luxury, because um, they need another win and a tie, so they can't afford a loss anymore. True. True. Just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Sometimes it makes sense. And yeah, here we see the prizes. A Dugong, a Marshadow for Stefan. Not too much, but two communication and a nest bomb might hurt him. For Para, 1-1 one, one, uh, Persian and Vermark. Nothing special there as well. Interestingly that he plays Lily. Um, he's seen him twice. We've seen him last game, of course, as well. It's just that I'm thinking about it now because it's the first turn. And so it means that he bo has both um, and Lily in his deck. Uh, yeah, I mean... Why for why a uh, settle on one when you can play both and have <laughs> the <laughs> options? <laughs> That's true. Oh yeah, it looks like he has a lily focus, and when he plays one m, so wow! That oh wow! <laughs> having played one m last game, 
<laughs> like the opening hand was a really big thing. And Stefan here having a m nicer, m definitely a nicer start than last turn. Going <laughs> with an ultra ball for his seal already. He's showing that he values this um, turn to Dugong a lot. He is discarding the Lavita though. Yeah, he doesn't need it in the early game and he has a uh, rescue stretcher in the late yeah, game. Yeah, that's true. Also, I'm seeing that um, Pera doesn't play Mew, so unlike Stefan, he's not able to protect from a, a Dugong attack. Ah. And Stefan has the energy on the Zorua, which is quite big, because this way he can retreat Zorak turn 2. So from it the decklist, I would actually say that Stefan is in favor. Um, yeah, it's, o it's hard to say, because um, Pera, of course, has the 2-2 two -two Persian, and as we've seen last game, being able to always put down Meowth and recover the Meowth and then have a second Persian and again to seal the game was pretty big. And Stefan's entire game was basically trying to play around Persian as much as possible. And he always like took those knockouts on the small Pokemon, trying to damage Persian, getting rid of Meowth and then taking knockouts of um, Persian. And it looks like Perry has a horrible start. Oh. He starts with the Top Prism Star and all he did was Guzmine up that seal Ooh. and pass. But so Stefan, Stefan knows if he gets what he needs now, he might win this game in this turn. Ooh, but he Ooh, didn't. Ooh, he didn't. Actually, Ooh. he drew a very bad hand there <laughs> himself. Oh, it and seems like he was a bit too greedy. He yeah. discarded these triple acceleration energies. It's, it's not like he had any other option. Oh, I actually think he had judged, so he could have judged where. Three yeah, he could have judged. Um, to but that would have given Perry yeah, another exactly. hand. So that's also nothing you yeah. really want to do if you realize your opponent has nothing he can really work with. Exactly. Actually, I don't know if the seal has an attack. <laughs> <laughs> I I it, it looks like it has an attack. Yeah. It, pr uh, it probably well attacks it like. It probably attacks for like 10 Yeah, or the 20. thing is, if it attacks for 20, that's a huge that's thing. Good. <laughs> because if Perry had doesn't have a Zorak in his hand. When he but can take a knockout. When did Stefan attach the double colorless energy? Oh, it attacks for 30, so. Oh, yeah, actually, that's good. Oh, if. 30, and. Oh, Pera has a Zorak. So, wow, this is very painful turn for Stefan. Oh. Maybe the double colorless attachment here was a bit greedy, because um, um, now, of course, um, another DCE might get wasted. So, and he just discarded three energies this in his last turn, so that would be four energies gone Yeah. in turn two without taking any prizes. However, 30 damage is quite big. Like, and not only that 10, not 20, it does 30, which is the crucial number because that way Lavita true, would true. does extra damage against it, and with a choice band or a Kukui, it will, would be able to take a knockout later on. But Stefan lost so many. So much energy and so <laughs> many energies <laughs> already. Yeah, also very important is that his <laughs> hand is terrible. <laughs> he doesn't have a supporter because he could have played it. He used the Dano only. He doesn't have an Ultra Ball because otherwise he could have Ultra Ball for Tabulele, for Kukui, and take a knockout with Seal. <laughs> 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 so he had quite a few options to, to take the game and he uh, didn't draw anything. That's sad. That's very sad, but that's that's the trading card game. Sometimes you you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah, sometimes you have luck, sometimes you don't. Exactly, and yeah. And it looks like Perry is actually able to swing that game around. Oh, and he and and he gets his M again with one of M, playing well out really really well. He he took it with Tapulele, so yeah yeah, but like <laughs> just playing with one of M, like Stefan just plays Lily and no M's. Yeah, true. And yeah, he got he. Perry showing that he can get a lot of value out of his 1M. Getting down his Zeruas now. And he doesn't have an energy, however. And already traded, so he just passes over to Stefan. So this seal with the double colorless energy actually survives the turn. <laughs> and can hit for 30 again. Yeah. Actually, that's that might be what he wants to do here, because double colorless energy on seal doesn't do much, so like conserving the energy by using Guzma and putting the seal to the bench doesn't really do much, because the um, yeah he does not play any regular yeah. energies exactly so and yeah and the Dugong needs free energy. Oh, he actually <laughs> attached a choice band and yeah. did 60 damage. Interesting that he opts to attach a choice band right away and not keep it for Zorak or something else later on. 
I mean, it doesn't really matter oh. because it still adds 30 damage. Yeah, yeah, but like um, Para might be able to use Acerola. Actually, he has Acerola in his hand, I believe, so he will probably heal. Oh, that's a painful Acerola. Yes, and like the Acerola. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Acerola actually in this situation would have been nice because he can trade and then use Acerola and evolve another Zorua yep. and trade again. So that's always nice in the early game. But his hand must have been uh, yeah, not like good enough. I yeah. mean, he missed energy last turn, so that's exactly. probably what he was trying so to do. So drawing up, drawing up to six when he have low, yeah, low amount but of cards. But it's interesting to see that he didn't trade first. Yeah, of course. I like, mean, you Lily to draw up to six and then you trade afterwards. So. But he could have traded, see if he gets the energy, and then play Acerola. Yeah, but like Stefan's breaking, so it's not like he's threatening a knockout any yeah, okay. anyways. And yeah, just drawing lots of cards. I mean, again, even if Azura gets knocked out, it's not that huge because what's most what's most important is developing his board first. So uh, Paris sees that, uses Lily to draw lots of cards, and then he has still his traits to develop his hand further. Throwing away useless stuff like Sloking. Interesting tech there for water energy, which yeah. is quite cool because Sloking has a first attack. Which says, look at your bonus hand and discard a card, uh, put a card from the end of the lost zone. So it can be quite nice sometimes. And um, can occasion ca occasionally cheese your opponent and throw away that crucial game winning card. Or yeah, something but like it right. looks like Para also traded away the water energy. Yeah, yeah, and this not uh, like he doesn't need and it. And this matchup it doesn't do much. The so sloking is gone now, anyways. And yeah, Stefan finally drawing a Tapulele. So he um, hopefully will be able to draw some Zoraks. He also has an Ultra Ball, so he can get a Zorak, so oh yeah. So this is quite for good Lily he will be use. He has the energy on the Zorak already. He will be able to take a knockout thanks to the choice ban. Yeah, the the seal put in lots of work for yeah. Stefan. It actually Much more than <laughs> we would have expected. <laughs> it actually did. <laughs> It's nice <laughs> that sometimes you hit the numbers you just need on very uncommon ways. So yeah, this attack on the seal is surprisingly good actually. 30 for the double colors, that's, that's something we see rarely. Yeah, and a seal doesn't even look that dangerous. <laughs> have you ever been attacked by a seal? <laughs> 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 oh, I sure haven't. <laughs> and yeah, so Stefan now getting two Zorak. He also has a communication still, so he can get a third Zorak if he wants to. And there's a second Zorak being powered up with a double colors and energy takes a knockout. and righteous so. beating for the knockout. Yeah. So even after the slow start, Stefan is now in the lead, having uh, taken two prizes already, True. and Para only one Zorak on board. Yeah, he's he's not only playing Zorak with a C Young, D Young, Dugong, D Dugong, D <laughs> Dugong focus. He's playing it with a C focus. Yes. And here you see a trade. I don't see any communication or ultra ball in Paris' hand, which is unfortunate for him because he would definitely like to see um, a Persian GX this turn. He could then catwalk for something like double Zorak and have like suddenly a crazy good board out of instead of a relatively weak one. Yeah, but it doesn't really look like yes, he's does. able to find it. He has the communication though. Oh yeah, he has the communication, so that's pretty good for him. So that's for Yeah, that, Persian, that will right? definitely be it for Persian. Actually, that's one in his prizes. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. He has the second he one. He plays a 2-2 two -two line, and yeah. we haven't seen a Persian yet, so... Needs to be somewhere in there. And, uh, I mean, it was somewhere in there. Exactly, so catwalk. Can search out any two cards. Very strong ability. Any two. Any. Don't even have to show them to your opponent. Just take them right away. <laughs> huh. That's... And he's going Pretty for good. Guzma and a Zorak here. Guzma, interesting. What he wants to target. Oh yeah, he definitely wants to target the Ditto, I guess. Probably, I mean, it's a weak yeah. target. Weak yeah. yet. Ditto's always something you want to take Yeah, out. and it also gets him on an, an even number of prices. Yeah, exactly, so that's the point. And yeah, you can trade once more. Also has this Lily, which is always a very suitable candidate once you get him the mid game since as we see he has like 10, 12, 15 cards in hand. Yeah, he doesn't really need to. He, he can't even use the Lily. Yeah. And another Ultra Ball. 
interesting to see what he will discard because he has quite a good cards here. Ace Roller, which is a painful discard in the mirror. Tate and what Liza. does he want? Um, the Zorak probably. Yeah, I'm not sure does if he, he has really Zorak. Does he really need it? Oh yeah, he has a Zorak. I mean, can you ever have enough Zoraks on board? But is it worth the Ace Roller? Yeah. The Ace Roller is indeed uh, an interesting discard. I mean, he's playing Paul Pad anyways. Yes, and he has more Ace Roller than Stefan as well. Also, um, he probably wants these three Zoraks, knowing that he wants to just dig through his deck and discard lots of Pokemon. And also... And he trades another Ace Roller away, so he really not valuing this heal, knowing that he will go down to four prizes and probably just trying to end the game quickly afterwards. Putting down another Zorua. I was just about to say that he might wanted to get rid of the small basics to save himself from... <laughs> Dugong. Dugong. Yeah. However, Stefan already um, has free triple acceleration and has gone. So yeah, he can only true. attack with Dugong once at this point. And yeah, also knocking off the Ditto um, took away Stefan's last option to evolve into. Uh, Stefan's only option to evolve into a Dugong. However, we see Seal in his hand. So he's thinking about if he wants to put it down, maybe use it anytime soon. But instead, first trading, seeing what he gets. I think he might need to put it down to make more damage with Righteous Beating. Hmm. Oh, he, he also has a communication, so he could maybe yeah. decide to go for something else. Also, damage isn't super important at this point, because 100 is enough to threaten a two-shot on a Zorak. Yeah. He can put another Pokemon on next turn, or a Choice Band, or Kukui, or Devat Field, which he has in hand as well. So not too important. Yeah, true. He has lots of options to go for the two hits out here. And he also has his own Persian GX now. Can't use Catwalk, unfortunately, since Peril took a knockout on Ditto only. However, having this Persian and making it harder for Peril to take a knockout on the Meowth can be important. I think we see the seal back in play again. Yeah. Just having this option is of course nice to have, and Stefan doesn't have many useful other Pokemon. And he could have communication that away for anything. I mean, it's it's no commitment for him. If Para knocks it out, it's still a single prize card, so that would force Para yeah. to play a seven but prize card game. So yeah, that that's probably what he's thinking. However, I don't know about it. I maybe would have preferred Stefan to see um, um, communication for Zorua to develop his board and get more Pokemon and then get more Pokemon to discard by for Persian because he only has one triple acceleration energy left so he has to decide if he wants to attack with Dugong or with Persian here and yeah having four prizes Persian would seem like a stronger option but again it seems like Stefan is just really valuing his Dugong yeah that's true it's focusing very much on them however it might be a bit too much because once again we see Para kinda um, dominating this game and Para always seems to be a bit in the lead, even though his board, well, actually, <laughs> it, it, it's it, pretty, it it's good. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it it has more damage, though. Very interesting that he didn't, uh, that he threw away two Ace Roller last turn. Now he could use one, but if he already has nine Pokemon in his discard pile, then he will be taking a knockout on the Zorak here with his Persian. I think, like, he must. Because otherwise he wouldn't have attached a triple acceleration energy yes. and would have gone for an attack with the Zoroark. Zoroark. Hmm. Interesting play. I personally don't know if I like it too much because he only has one person in on board. So Stefan might be able to take a knockout when next turn with his own person and then clean up the game knocking off the Zoroark. Like as a roller definitely seems like the card he would have liked the most. But yeah, pe perhaps Para seeing, uh, looking for a different line. Checking exactly which cards he has left. Going for a rescue stretcher for his fourth Zorak. So here oh, we see. Oh, that's the alternate art. <laughs> I didn't recognize yeah. it at first. <laughs> Trading away, slow bro. Yeah, now it might hurt Stefan a bit that he put down this heal last turn because he is um, quite on the clock to get the revenge knockout on the Persian if Para attacks with Persian, that is. 
Uh, I'm is running short. Oh Only yeah. roughly seven minutes left. So seven minutes left. Parry checking his discard pile, checking his hand, getting rid of some more Pokemon. Stefan probably asking him for maybe hurry bit. Oh, interesting that he's playing two of these Marshadow. So he seems to be focusing a lot on the Persian. Marshadow, a card that's e Pokemon that's easy to get into with this card pile and a very versatile Pokemon, so very popular and was the right decks here. If it's on the bench, you may discard it and then discard a stadium in play. And. But, uh, yeah. As there's no stadium in play anything. Yeah, yeah, he's just trying them away with. And oh, he's opting to attack with righteous beating, so. Ah, so this triple acceleration energy just goes into the discard pile without doing yes. anything. Ah, that hurts. That's kind of awkward, but Paris still has plenty of triple acceleration energies. Unlike Stefan, and he realizes that he doesn't really want to give Stefan the option to. Um, to use his catwalk and take a revenge knockout with his own Persian. So yeah, as I said, the Ace Roller would have been really nice for Pere, being able to heal off the damage from Zorak, and also being able to um, put another Meowth into play, perhaps. Yeah, but however, his Ace Roller and are in this good pile. Yeah, he certainly, doesn't really certainly. have a way to access them. Like he could play Paul Pad and then hope to trade into them, but at the moment they are gone. And now uh, let's see one, two. Uh, I don't know how many Pokemon Stefan has in his discard pile. He would need eight because he has triple en acceleration energy. He has Choice Band. He has Guzma. So if he's able to take a knockout at to take a knockout on Paris Persian, that would be very strong. And we see a field blower, a strong field blower choice been gone from the Persian. Yeah, because Stefan is in an awkward position here. Because if he takes a knockout on um, the active Zorak, then Para can just catwalk, can definitely get the one shot on can definitely get a knockout on the Persian of Stefan. Being and then he would be down to two prizes and there would be like nothing Stefan could do to take his last two prizes. So uh, Stefan can't really take out a knockout on this active Zorak. And instead, he's opting to Guzma up Tapulele. Seems to be the only Pokemon he can knock out. And yeah, he's using um, Persian GX attack, doing 150 and switch it to the bench. Yeah, and that's probably the safest yes. play. So he could use it again next turn to KO the already damaged Zorak on the bench. Yeah, uh, unless Para will probably take a knockout on the Persian here, just to make sure that Stefan has an hard at as hard time as possible. Um, <laughs> Something like a lieutenant search would be nice for him to also <laughs> heal the Zorak, <laughs> leaving Stefan with no option to um, take his last but knockout. Looking at his deck list, I can almost certainly say that we won't see a lieutenant search. No. <laughs> and if we see one, we should call the judge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate for Para <laughs> because. Um, this will give Stefan the option to Guzma up the damage Zorak for the last two prizes. Um. Yeah, and so yeah, let's see how Para is going to approach these last last few rounds of the game. Yeah, this is might be his last round of the game. Last turn, you think? Yeah, it's, it's basically the those next two turns are of course the deciding ones because yep. If yeah, I agree. If Stefan doesn't win next turn, then Pero will pro most likely win the turn after. So, let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, what Pero are Pero's win options here? Yeah, actually? Pero definitely wants to take a knockout on the... Oh, actually he doesn't need to... T no, no, no. Yeah, he probably wants to take a knockout on the Persian just to get rid of Catwalk. Stefan doesn't have triple acceleration energies anymore, so he can't attack with the Persian. But oh, okay. Catwalk would grant him Guzma or Pulpit if he were to not have Guzma in his deck. So he would probably have everything to take a knockout. So Per just wants to take a knockout on the Persian and then he hopes that Stefan doesn't have a Guzma and then he would just attach another triple acceleration energy and take the game. And what are Stefan's win options here? Yeah, Stefan of course wants to Guzma the damage Zorak for yeah. game. Okay. Yeah. 
So all That's he pretty needs straightforward. Yeah, yeah I agree. All he needs is for Guzma. And actually, I'm not sure, but I think he might have it in hand. Yeah, I also think so. But I also think that he knows that time is short, <laughs> and he would just probably show his opponent as well. Perry hasn't played a supporter yet, right? Oh yeah, so an interesting option. Interesting option for Perry would be to. Um, Oh, actually, maybe that would have been a good play right ah. away to just use Tapu Lele. Uh, yeah, if he had yep. promoted Zorak right away, he could have Ace rolled it and then attacked with Persian to take a knockout. And Stefan, not having um, triple acceleration energies left in his deck, couldn't really punish that play. But like this way, it's fine as well because Stefan ca uh, Para can basically do the same play next turn. He so he basically just waits, takes a knockout, uh, takes uses Ace roller next turn. True. Takes a knockout. And, and is he righteous beating for 100? Yes. Going into a Zorak that he can't use. And it doesn't really look good on Stefan's side here. He was very close to winning. He actually drew into a Paul Pat. And doesn't really help him anymore. Yeah, he of course needs to... Like, there's not too much he can do. He can just damage the Zorak. Um, His deck is so thin. But Para just shuffled back Acer Roller, so he will definitely have Acer Roller next turn. He doesn't have triple acceleration energies left this early. Dedana played, throwing away three of them, really hurting him here. Yeah, and Stefan also threw away his judge in his, uh, I think, second turn already, so there are also not really any options Stefan can actually get cards back into his deck, aren't there? Um, I don't know if he has played Rescue Stretcher, but, okay, so here we see time. Oh yeah, it's Stefan time. Stefan being turn zero, yeah, yeah. Okay. Stefan being turn zero. Um, so Stefan has two more turns, like this turn and uh, one more turn, so he will probably uh, just attack and try to win. Oh yeah, he's also trying to charge up his Persian. Smart play, preparing two that. Two double colorless energies also do the job. Yeah, exactly. They can substitute a triple acceleration energy. It and hurts a bit. But on the other hand, you don't have no. to discard it after the turn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very important. It's actually a very good play because otherwise Perry would just ace the roller and attack with Persian for a game. Yep. Because then he would have no damaged Pokemon. This way he kind of needs to get rid of Persian. Because otherwise Stefan can just attack an attach another DCE and take a, no take a knockout for game. So for you guys at home who maybe haven't seen the beginning of the tournament... Yeah, we so only play seven rounds today, so if Stefan is able to win this game, this match will end in a tie and both players will still be able to make top eight. Yes. But and if Stefan is unable to win this game, or if Perry is able like if Perry is able to win, or if this match is not getting finished, Perry is going to win and he will already be 75% into top looks <laughs> And it certainly looks like the likely outcome here because yeah. I don't really see a line for Para here. Because Stefan has Pawpet, he can trade for all his cards in his deck. He will most certainly have enough um, enough Pokemon in his discard pile. Yes. Para doesn't have any field blower left, so he can't get rid of the choice, but on the Persian. And it also looks like Perry has only one card left in his deck. Yeah. An Acerola. And yeah, so Perry is just um, hoping that Stefan does not have access to uh, Guzma. No, he's just taking a knock. Looks like he's just going to attack here. Maybe hoping that Stefan's last energies are prized. They aren't, we know for sure. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, he uses a GX attack. So Stefan only needs the um, energy and a Guzma. But he can use Catwalk, and he has Pawpet in hand. And it looks like he has it all. And he's checking if he has um, enough Pokemon to take Might a knockout on the Tapulele. And yeah, he has nine, po nine Pokemon, so he can take a knockout on whatever Pokemon he wants. 
He has a Paw Pet. Uh, he has Guzma. He has energy. There's the energy. There's the Guzma. So now I need to use Catwalk. And this will end in a tie between those two Zorak players. <sighs> that was close. Yes, yeah, certainly. This ace, this turn where Perro decided to discard both his ace the rollers with trade and ultra yeah. ball, ended up hurting him a lot and basically lost him the game. If he had ace the roller the turn after he did that, he most likely would have won. And here, yeah, unfortunately, this shows again how important it is to know with to to trade the proper cards and like yeah. basically no one is able to do that. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. We will have a quick break and be soon back with the last round here. Don't go anywhere and always stay hydrated. <laughs>